Great. So once again, welcome everyone. Uh, we are very happy to have uh, Mathej Parshit to give today's Osmoon lecture on extending physics to Clifford space towards the unification of particles and forces, including gravity. Mathej is at the Joseph Stefan Institute in Ljubljana and is known for his research in mirror particles, conformal relativity, Kalusa Klein theories, brain world scenarios, Clifford algebras, and relativity in Clifford spaces. Mathej grew up in Ljubljana and studied physics in the university there. And after graduating, he started working at the Stefan Institute. He also worked at the Institute of Theoretical Physics in Catania, Italy, where he collaborated with Erasco Ricami and Piero Caldirola. And under their supervision, he completed his doctoral thesis. He has been a regular visitor at ICTP Trieste, where he worked also with Asim Barut on the spinning particle in a gravitational field. Mathe's more recent interests have included the study of geometric calculus based on Clifford algebras and their relevance to fundamental physics. I should say I myself have been particularly inspired by the recent research and application of Clifford algebras to the unification problem. I believe these works contain deep insights and uh, he's one of those few people who's really at the frontiers of the unification problem. His noteworthy works include a theory according to which nature is exactly symmetric with respect to space inversion, provided that one postulates the existence of mirror particles and mirror interactions among them. Mathej has also written two books, The Landscape of Theoretical Physics, A Global View from Point Particles to the Brain World and Beyond, in search of a unifying principle, and also the book Stumbling Blocks Against Unification. So it's a pleasure to have you with us, Matej. Over to you, please. Oh, thank you, Tejita, for this introduction. And also thank to organizer for inviting me uh, to speak in this series of seminars. Uh, so just before beginning, I would like to remark that the weather here in Ljubljana was terrible, and I hope that there will be no uh, cut of electricity. For this case, I have prepared my mobile phone, everything. So if my connection suddenly stops, uh, just wait and I will uh, rejoin from my mobile phone. Uh, so, <laughs> okay, okay. Um, so let me start. Um, uh, this this is summary uh, of uh, my talk, uh, overview of the, my, my talk. First, I will discuss finite dimensional description of extended object and show how strings and brains can be described in terms of the volume degrees of freedom. Uh, this is, will lead us to the concept of the so-called Clifford space, which is a six-dimensional manifold with the Clifford algebra uh, as a tangent space at any of its points. So Clifford algebra, CL13, is a vector space. Uh, but it does not provide a description of all 120 independent rotations uh, in 16 dimensions. Therefore, uh, we will replace it uh, by 16 dimensional vector space, V8A. Uh, this will lead us uh, uh, to the uh, into the grant unification in a 16 dimensional manifold. And such a 18 dimensional manifold has enough room for unifying all interactions, including gravity. Finally, I will discuss what could be called the so-called second Cliffordization, what I call second Cliffordization, because we first performed the Cliffordization of four-dimensional space-time and obtained a 16-dimensional uh, space. And then we perform the Cliffordization of that 16-dimensional space. Such a procedure, procedure then leads to E8. Uh, I will say something more uh, at the end. Okay, but let us now consider uh, 
So, I don't know why not. Okay, so let me see what I should do to have next slide. Oh, no. So the, the arrows are not working? Ah, the arrows are not working, but with this wheel on the mouse is tricky because it can go three slides further instead of one. Uh, okay, let me see. I can show slowly. Okay, so yes. let me say something about finite dimensional description of extended objects. Uh, the Earth has a huge, practically infinite number of degrees of freedom. And yet, when describing uh, the motion of the Earth around the sun, uh, we neglect all those degrees of freedom, we, uh, uh, except for the coordinates of the center of mass. Now, so in general, instead of infinitely many degrees of freedom associated with an extended object, we may consider a finite number of degrees of freedom. For instance, strings and brains have infinitely many degrees of freedom. But at first approximation, we can consider just the center of mass and write it by the center of mass coordinates x nu. Next approximation is in considering the holographic projections of the oriented areas enclosed by the string. So these projections are the coordinates x12, x23, and so on. Uh, we may go further and search uh, for eventual uh, thickness of the object. If the string has finite thickness, that is, uh, for instance, if actually it is not a string, but uh, a two brain, then there exists the corresponding volume degree of freedom. For instance, x, one, two, three. So instead of describing string uh, with uh, uh, these embedding functions, uh, we can describe it by the finite set of uh, this volume coordinates. So one of them is, yeah, yeah is x, one, two, three. Uh, in general, an extended object in space-time, uh, we have uh, 16 coordinates, x mu 1, mu 2, mu, mu r in general, where r goes from 0 uh, to 4. And uh, short notation is just x capital M. And these coordinates are projections of r-dimensional volumes, areas onto the coordinate planes. Uh, so I would like first to ask, I see here the control uh, of, uh, and you don't see this control bar over my uh, slide. No, no, no. Okay, so don't, okay. Because I have this control in order to control uh, this uh, zoom, but you don't see it. Okay, fine. So for instance, let me state this. Uh, if we have closed string described by the embedding functions and short uh, description is by the set of the coordinates x mu nu. In the cl closed membrane, the embedding functions uh, uh, yeah, are, are functions of two parameters. And instead of this, we have description of this. We have mapping from this uh, description into the description with volumes. OK, but instead of closed string, we also can have open membrane, uh, for instance, spent by the same, uh, enclosed by the same, same loop. Uh, but in this case, uh, we have here areas, open membrane, cascader area. Therefore, a description entails not only x nu nu, but also additional parameter, which, which is associated with this uh, scalar area. But open membrane can have different shapes. And if the shape is different, then this S is different, the area is different. This, this loop, boundary loop can be the same, uh, but uh, these two objects are distinguished by the value of this scalar parameter. So each of those objects is described by a corresponding set of coordinates, S, its scalar, X, U, its vector coordinates, and so on. And we have these four vector coordinates. Uh, shortly, we describe all those objects, as I said, with X, M, where M goes from 1 to 16. Uh, so we postulate that fundamental objects are conglomerates of brains of dimensionality from zero to four. 
they are not points, strings, membranes, three brains, or four brains, but a, a mixture of all those objects. Such extended objects, I already said, are described by the set of these coordinates here. Uh, and they can be combined into a single Clifford algebra variant object, uh, where we have uh, superposition spent over uh, these vectors, B vectors, three vectors, and scalars. So scalars can be written this way. Um, I must be careful. Okay. So, so we arrive at the concept of Clifford space. This is the space of all possible uh, position polyvectors. So X denotes position in the so-called Clifford space, and X is the Clifford algebra value object, a Clifford number that I call here a polyvector. Um, yeah. Uh, so instead of the usual relativity formulated in space-time, in which the interval is this one, quadratic form, uh, we are studying the theory in which the interval is the space of air volume, and the, 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 the quadratic form is this one. Okay, now just for the explanation, uh, this uh, uh, this can be written this way in terms of, of the vectors. Vectors are, uh, are given by components and basis vectors, which are generators of Clifford algebra. They satisfy uh, this uh, uh, Clifford algebra defining relations. And this dx should not be understood otherwise than in the usual introductory uh, textbook on special and general relativity. This is just a limit of, of distance between two points on, on the manifold. So I do not interpret this dx uh, as differential forms. So the same can be done with this capital dxx, which is a superposition of, of the Clifford algebra basis, gamma mu. And this dx is the difference, limit of the difference between two points now on the 16 dimensional manifold, the Clifford space. And gamma mu is this object here, uh, so batch product uh, of vectors. And uh, we can perform the scalar product uh, with this star is scalar product, and we take uh, uh, gamma bar and dagger, uh, and this is reversion or Hermitian conjugation, if we are doing it. Okay, so the scalar product is defined in this way. So the, the Clifford product of two Clifford numbers, and we take the scalar part. So we obtain this metric. And because we use this reversion here, uh, the, the metric, as I show now, is neutral. Uh, so coordinates of Clifford space can be used to model extended objects. Uh, yeah, as I said, they are generation of the center of mass, and instead of describing extended object in full detail, we can describe them in terms of the center of mass, R and so on. Okay, I'm repeating this. Just. So, in particular, extended object can be fundamental strings or brains, or more precisely, conglomerates of those uh, strings and brains. Okay, we have different space, and as there are word lines in space time, so there can be word lines in Clifford space, described by this parametric equation in Clifford space. Um, yeah. So the action is, the action for uh, such uh, word line is this one. This is just the relation of the ordinary relativity with these equations of motion, second derivative with respect to tau. And these equations imply area or volume uh, motion. And the metric is eta nu nu. It is neutral. So we have, uh, uh, sorry. I wanted to get only one slide, but doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, so signature is this one. The above dynamics holds for special uh, case in which the area changes linearly because of this simple second order differential equation. It changes linearly this now. For description of more general motion, one has to introduce 
curve Clifford space. Then, of course, this becomes geodetic equation in curve Clifford space, and it takes into account uh, uh, higher dimensional gravity in Clifford space. Uh, now, I must be very careful with this wheel on the mouse in order not to go too far. So, a one line in Clifford space represents the evolution of a thick particle uh, in space time. Uh, and thick particle can be a complement of P brace, but such information is not uh, necessary uh, because uh, the thick particle uh, can be a conglomerate of whatever extended object that can be sampled by polyvector coordinates xm. Okay, now a worksheet in C, in, we can give this just in Clifford space, also a worksheet uh, described by the embedding functions of two, no, yeah, two parameters. Uh, and uh, it describes a thick string in space time. So this is Six thing uh, because it the six thing uh, can be conglomerate of p brains again the conglomerate of p brains now uh, so the usual thing are infinitely thin objects and so also called extended objects they are not fully extended infinitely thin strings are singular objects. Uh, instead of infinitely thin strings, uh, we are having here thick strings, and their thickness is encoded in polyvector coordinates xm. Uh, the string action in conformal gauge is this one. And uh, if we use Jacky Dawes definition of vacuum, it turns out that no central term in the Virasoro algebra. Uh, it takes place if the space in which the string lives has this signature, neutral signature. And the space in which such string that we are discussing here is Clifford space, its dimension is 16, and signature is 18. So in Clifford space, string theory is uh, consistent. I, I, I have this in some of my paper more precisely elaborated. Okay, so what is interesting here that no extra dimension of space time are required. We started from four dimensions of space time and considered configurations in this space time. And we described in this model explained here in terms of uh, polyvector coordinates, uh, Clifford algebra valued object. Okay. Yeah, this x mu, the co uh, components, gamma mu is the basis, and this object here is polyvector. And such object contains spinos because instead of being expanded in terms of gamma mu as here, it can be expanded in terms of 16 basis spinor psi, where alpha is spinor index and i denotes four different ideals. Okay. Yeah. So, okay, let me say now something on the transformations <coughs> of Clifford numbers. A generic Clifford number is this one, where gamma A is this batch product of vectors. Now I'm using a capital A instead of M. The reason is clear because we have to, to distinguish a manifold uh, basis from the a tangent space basis. So for tangent space basic, I'm using this uh, A instead of M. Uh, okay. So in general, a Clifford number transforms in this way. Phi is Clifford number transformed into phi prime, uh, uh, which is obtained by multiplication from the left and from the right by a certain Clifford number, uh, which can be, for instance, this one, R uh, given terms of uh, parameters alpha and S uh, given terms parameter beta, and gamma is, is Clifford algebra basis. So in particular, if S is one, we have this transformation, like transformation of a spinor. Uh, but let us now consider as an example, uh, this case where R is e to a bivector. Uh, this can be expanded in this way. And S is also a bivector with different parameter now beta, but expanded in, in this way. And XY 
uh, what, how various Klebold numbers x, x, a, gamma, a transform under this transformation. So they transform this way. And now, uh, first, let us consider a vector. A vector, transform vector is given by this expression where we have now uh, both alpha and beta in the transformation with minus sign. And, um, okay, next, uh, we can consider uh, uh, an object uh, which is superposition of vector and three vector. And in this case, we get plus alpha plus beta in the transformation law. Uh, if we consider superposition of scalar and B vector, we also get plus sign. But if we consider, uh, what is this, pseudo scalar, eh? because this is pseudo vector, because this is gamma one, gamma two, but each of these basis vectors is multiplied by gamma phi, so this is basis pseudo vector, we again obtain this minus sign. So, we have transformation from the left and from the right, and the alpha and beta, two parameters. But usual rotation of vectors or pseudo vectors are reproduced if the angle beta for the right transformation is equal to minus angle alpha for the left transformation. That is, if beta is minus alpha. If we do that, then all other transformations which mix the grade vanish. So this transformation here that mix the grade vanish. And this is the usual transformation that we consider. We say that vector transforming this way that we have here cosinus alpha, uh, yeah, the, the two alpha, cosinus alpha, yeah. So these are then, but in Clifford algebra, we have uh, more general possibilities within Clifford algebra. Uh, so in, in general, we have the transformations that mix the grade, that is a vector, x1 can become x12 or x123 can become uh, x0123 and so on. Uh, so in general, the transformation is given in this way, uh, where A is this uh, multiple index. And this transformation comes uh, from, uh, from this manipulation. This R, of course, acts on the Clifford algebra basis in this way, but uh, this matrix can be uh, shifted to act on the components, so the components transform in this way. And, uh, but because uh, there are 16 parameters, alpha A, and 16 parameters, uh, beta A, the transformation matrix K, alpha, has altogether 32 parameters. Therefore, the transformation, this one, is not a generic rotation of the components in a six in sixteen dimensions, because the generic transformation uh, rotation has hundred twenty parameters. To describe rotations in the sixteen dimensional space, let us introduce sixteen basic vectors, which are generators of uh, this Clifford algebra CL eight eight, uh, and they span. So these generators span a vector space, uh, which is a subspace, grade one subspace of this higher dimensional Clifford algebra, CL88. So I will now talk about Clifford algebra as a vector space. In fact, I will replace Clifford algebra by 16 dimensional vector space. Uh, so we will now consider V88 as a vector space spanned by the basis vector key QA that satisfy uh, these uh, uh, relations. So this is inner product dot product, uh, and this is defining equation for the Clifford algebra, in this case in 16 dimensions. The metric is diagonal, signature 88. So uh, we have, this means that we have eight pluses and eight minuses. And these are generators of TL88. So instead of the object X, which are superposition of basis, uh, Clifford algebra basis, we can use the object. Okay, I don't know which symbol to use. I use this uh, funny symbol, uh, which is superposition of vectors in uh, 
in which are the of P fold algebra. So, uh, so V88 is a tangent space uh, to the 16 dimensional manifold M88. And a possible decomposition of the manifold is this one, and of, and of the corresponding uh, vector spaces is, is this one. For instance, this part here is internal space. This part is Minkowski space, and this is extra part. What about this, uh, this extra part? Uh, this extra part combines together with N, N3 into a six dimensional space, N24. Uh, a good feature of this N24 are, but first, it is the arena for two time physics considered by, by Bars. It enables the Stuckelberg theory. It is the arena for conformal group. So these are the features of this space. Um, and what is this space? Internet space. A good feature of this internet space is that it is the arena for the SO10 grand unification. So I, as a physicist, but I am using this notation, SO10 instead of speed 10. Okay, but this is a matter of, not, of no matter of um, So in this scheme, the arena for physics is N88, and the group SO88 acting in N88 uh, contains this group, which further split in, in this way. And here we have Lorentz transformation, and here we have this extra a piece, which uh, in some cases can be interpreted as giving the Stuckelberg evolution parameter. And this internal space uh, is this one. Is covered by the Pat uh, Patisalam model, which unifies electronic and strong interaction. So we have Basarized as the framework, which enables the unification of the Lorentz group with the Patti Salam group, a descent of which is the standard model gauge group, SO3 cross SO2 cross SO1. Okay, I am claiming that we are unifying. Uh, we are doing uh, uh, physics in 16 dimensional space. So we are mixing uh, space time and uh, internal space. But what then about uh, Coleman mandul mandular theorem? Uh, it is not applicable to physics in Clifford space uh, because in Clifford space, for instance, if you have wave function, uh, which is a function. Uh, of 16 parameters of Clifford space, then unitarity is defined with respect to this 16 dimensional. And only if we somehow break uh, the, the symmetry in this signal, then we arrive at the result that uh, space time and internal symmetry can only be direct product and do not mix. At this fundamental level, before breaking, they can mix. I think that something similar was observed by a number of different. Uh, uh, our authors. Okay, let me now consider a vector quantum field uh, which satisfies this Klein Gordon equation with this phi, whoever uh, phi is Clifford algebra object. So phi is this one, this object here, superposition basis, uh, Clifford basis object, uh, which, uh, yeah, yeah, okay, no, I'm sorry. This is no, not Clifford algebra, this is just basis of 16 dimensional vector space. And th they satisfy this dot product where eta is metric with this signature. But because we are complex, we can expand it in terms of different components and uh, different uh, signature, and then we can have uh, different. So this is, of course, very well known. The signature does not matter uh, in uh, if. Uh, in complex spaces, but I'm just testing the, to, to show that why, because the same complex valued vector field can be expressed in terms of new components and new basis vectors, and the transformation of the group SOP PQ acting on Q prime preserves the new metric. Yeah. So in particular, we can have the case where P is two and Q is. Uh, 14. So if this wave function is complex, we are no longer, we do not necessarily have signature 8.8. 8. We can have such signature that uh, the underlying uh, vector space, 16 dimensional vector space, is now 2.14 and can be 
composed in this way. So we have this V10 uh, for uh, the for the internal vector space. Okay, so this was about vectors. Now let me say something about spinners in M88. Uh, so I'm sorry, this movement was due to the fact that I produced uh, <clears throat> slides in PowerPoint, but uh, when transformed into PDF, uh, TPF did not quite obey me what I wanted to do. Uh, there were some, uh, some distortions. Okay, so the tangent space of this space is V88. Uh, the basis vectors are this one, and they can be split in this way into eight vectors uh, QA and eight vector Q tilde A. The first vector's uh, signature, uh, the, the, the thought quality is positive and this one is negative signature. Uh, so the signature, okay, the signature is eight eight. And we can take uh, this uh, new basis element, the so-called read basis element that satisfied the uh, fermionic uh, anti-commutation relations and spin-offs are given in terms of the creation operators psi dagger acting on the vacuum, which is the product of eight uh, annihilation of the operators psi, which are therefore annih annihilation operators. Just, uh, just for completeness, I slightly redefined uh, this object here by introducing an I here, uh, so that the width basis vector are given this term, which is more usually used for the definition of spinos, uh, namely with the I, uh, and this Q bar now satisfies uh, the, this metric here. Uh, both cases positive. Um, yeah, so okay, the spinor, a generic spinor field in uh, 16 dimensions is given by this expression where we have superposition of this uh, object here. Uh, so uh, <clears throat> application of creation oper uh, operators on the vacuum, vacuum is this one. Uh, so this is spinor defined with respect to this vacuum here, defined in this way. This is compact notation for spinor psi expanded in terms of the basis uh, spinors S alpha for compact notation. Now, this spinor uh, depends on position on M, so it means that psi are functions of the function of the coordinates in M, and the direct equation is this one. Q are now like the uh, gamma, uh, gammas in the direct equation. And this M goes from 1 to 16. In general, they are complex. Uh, and therefore, of course, uh, the same spinor uh, can be generated in terms of the basis vector QA of any signature uh, PQ. For instance, instead of constructing spinors over V88 across C, uh, we can construct them over V24 plus uh, V10 cross C. Now again, the, the problem is transformation of PowerPoint into PDF. Uh, if I use the correct symbol for complex set, uh, it can uh, nonsense. So I had to simplify notation. This means complex numbers now. So here leave spinors of the Minkowski space and here leave the spinor of the SO10 ground unification. Spinors in M8 are function, functions of position XM in M8, and they have values as members of minimal ideals of complexified CL88, uh, which can be written in this way, uh, in this way, or this way, or finally in this way, as CL simply as CL16 to cross C, because we are complexified Clifford algebra in 16 dimensions. And here, are spinors of the Minkowski space as a part of the larger theory, which I already said can be the two time physics by Bath, the Stuckerberg theory or conformal theory. And this part CL10 here leave the spinors or can value the spinors of SO10 grand unification. Now I am considering 
a slightly simplified case. I leave out this extra m one comma one part, and just for the, for simplicity, I consider this cross product of, of space time and uh, the internal space m ten, and a spinner is then given in this way because the product of two sorts of spinner. Those spinners here are composed from the vectors in one three are composed from the, the one four dimensional vector space, and those are composed from the uh, ten dimensional vector space. Okay, uh, now I okay, see, so this is the function phi of coordinates of the sixteen dimensional manifold and. The coordinates can be split in two parts, Minkowski part and internal part, x m bar, where m bar goes over internal space dimensions. And then this uh, operator, Dirac operator, uh, becomes the sum of two parts. And this part here with gamma m bar uh, can act as a mass term in the Dirac equation. So, so this is the Dirac equation with uh, massive part. Uh, let me say it a, a bit uh, further. Though this is very simple, but perhaps it's useful to say again. Uh, so this is the Dirac equation. This is the splitting of of, of Q vectors. Uh, so that we have Q mu and remember Q mu are now written as gamma because this is more familiar notation and mu is. Uh, space time index and gamma, I said gamma and bar. So we have now this, this part here and this internal, internal part here. And uh, by performing uh, the separation of the variables, each uh, term uh, then satisfies the equations with a constant. And uh, so the overall equation becomes uh, this equation with the constant. Uh, this is then, as I said already, but now I explain uh, Dirac equation in four dimensions. The internal states in this picture are eigenstates of the operators of this internal space Dirac like operator. So this operator gamma m, uh, derivative m, is responsible for generations. And when acting on the spinner field, it consists of two parts. So this phi 10 is the spinner spin in internal space. And uh, the action of this operator gives two terms. Uh, one term is just derivative on the components of the field. And uh, this acts like an orbital contribution uh, to the mass and this one, this contribution due to Yukawa coupling. So this is in connection in the internal space. It comes from this expression here because if the derivative x on, on spinner basis, it gives connection. And uh, this 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 del dm is uh, derivative in the direction of the coordinate tangent vectors. Uh, this generates derivatives. Uh, other authors are using different symbols, but I found that it's just okay if I use this easily written symbol, uh, much easier to write this symbol when doing long calculation than box or whatever people use. Uh, there should be no confusion because if this operator's x on, uh, on scalar components is, is just like partial derivative, and if it x on the, the basis, uh, then it gives connections to this relation here. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, let me explain further here. So the connection in the internal space, omega, has the role of Higgs field in this scheme. Generations of fundamental particles arise because of the presence of extra dimensions of Clifford space. So many people will say, oh, yeah, 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 okay, but let me leave now, not, not to confuse too many things. Uh, so interactions arise in M8 if M8 is curved. 
Uh, then we have this equation here, where this psi is now a generic uh, spinor in uh, in uh, sixteen dimensional space, and it of course has twenty uh, two hundred fifty six uh, components. The equation uh, using this uh, uh, plugging this, we get these two terms: this term and this term, where the S M is this uh, connection. So we have this and this. So at the fundamental level, we have this two contribution with the higher dimensional uh, spin connection. But in the moment that I just uh, described, in particular, uh, if you consider this model, um, when we have only 14 dimensional space, that is uh, <clears throat> space time spin of multi uh, and uh, the internal space, 10 dimensional internal space spin of, then uh, this derivative uh, gives two terms, of course, because you, we use this. And so we get this, this, and this. And now by uh, also uh, uh, splitting uh, this uh, higher dimensional gamma, so calculus in this way, and derivatives in this way, we obtain this equation here in which, um, I must be very careful to go only one slide forward, not three slides forward. Okay, so this term here gives gravity. This is spin connection of gravity. This is uh, these are Young Mills gauge fields, and uh, this is internal part which gives mass. And here we have Higgs field and also another sort of Higgs field and orbital part. So what is interesting here that in this model uh, for the generation of mass are not responsible only Higgs field, but also uh, orbital momentum in the internal uh, space. So one has to study uh, dynamics of how this object behave with respect to the ten-dimensional internal space or with respect to certain breaking of this internal space. So there's a lot of possible models. Um, yeah, okay, let me now say something what I could call second Cliffordization. So we had the chain. We started from four dimensional space. We arrived at the Clifford algebra. Then we replace this Clifford algebra again by a vector, by the 16 dimensional vector space. And then from this 16 dimension, we can obtain this uh, algebra CL88 by the process of the second Cliffordization. So by not considering only the vectors, grade one elements, but also uh, B vectors, three vectors, and so on and so on until uh, the end uh, of this uh, very big uh, structure. And uh, a subspace of this algebra is E8. Uh, so we have that E8 arises uh, from the space time M1 to itself from which one can construct a Clifford algebra, CL, uh, now this Clifford algebra, the later algebra as a vector space is isomorphic to, to V8, and its basis vectors generates the Clifford algebra, CL88, whose subspace is E8. The algebra E8 arises from the second Cliffordization of the tangent space V13 of the space time manifold M12. So we have that the physical origin uh, uh, of A8 as a possible unification group lies in the fact that in space time we do, uh, do not exist only point events, but also lines, areas, volumes, and fold, fold volumes associated with extended objects such as brains and conglomerates of those brains. So this is not this, and so I must be very careful. Yeah, okay. So we arrive, uh, so we have spinor in, so I repeat the definition of spinor uh, uh, that I already had. And this omega is the product of, of chi, which in this case are annihilation operators. Um, but this, this is just one possible definition of vacuum. 
in general, a vacuum can be defined as the product of a certain number of, of, of chi and chi dagger. So explicitly, we can have these possibilities. Vacuum defined as the product of a skies, and this product with some of them being chi dagger, and all of them being chi dagger and mixed cases in this way. Um, and uh, with each vacuum so constructed, we can associate a different Fox space basis for spinners of the corresponding left idea of the complexified. Hello. Hello. So, another possible spinner is this one, where we take vacuum for this one, vacuum omega eight. This one vacuum omega eight. And a generic, so this, this generic object is a perquisition of all these many vacuum, all because alpha goes from one to 256 and beta, we look at those two, two again, the same set. Uh, this uh, denotes the spinor components of a given idea, and this denotes idea. Now, okay. This object, this vacuum, where nil potents, so we have defined a vacuum in terms of the nil potents omega. So products, these products here. Alternatively, we can define vacuum in terms of the idempotents. So this is omega and omega dagger. I denote it here is this omega tilt. And each of the states when creation operators act on omega, nilpotent vacuum, can also be written in this form uh, by action of a different number of creation operator, but acting now on this uh, idempotent vacuum. So both descriptions are equivalent. Some people are confused, how, how can I use nilpotent? So this is equivalent. Uh, so analogous holds for all, uh, all those vacuum. Yeah. So a generic element of Clifford algebra is a sum, the sum of multivectors. And now uh, this this product of uh, the product of basis vectors and compactively write this object here. Now Q both A is the basis element of different grades of the of the Clifford algebra CL16. Um, but the generic element of this uh, um, Clifford algebra can also be expressed in the sum of spinos, so in this way. Uh, so this is now, uh, this is now, these are now spinos. Uh, spinor basis, basis spinos of different ideas of this algebra. So, uh, and this, yeah, between the, so this is interesting because between the elements of the multivector and the spinor basis, there is a relation of this form, linear. Uh, so basis, vector, uh, basis, uh, yeah, basis element is superposition of basis spinor and vice versa. Okay, here both index extreme distinguishes a multivector batch product. Uh, yeah, if if we order indexes, then it is just a, a batch product. Uh, it from from a vector a is goes to sixteen, and uh, here this a also goes to sixteen, but we have product of them. So now let us consider any Clifford algebra, CLN, with basis elements QA that goes from one to two to, to N. N is the dimension of the Clifford space, uh, like, uh, the dimension of the space in which Clifford algebra, over which Clifford algebra is uh, defined. And CA are basis spinners. There are also two to end these basis spinors. Um, 
And now let us consider this uh, commutation relations uh, uh, where uh, this F are structure constants. So we have this one. But we can transform this equation by using uh, this relation between spinors and uh, multivectors. We can transform in this, this equation. So commutator of two spinors. Uh, so we have then transformed uh, uh, structure constant. Um, yeah. But what is interesting is that we can do the big uh, commutator, commutators between uh, multivectors and spinors, which gives you then, for instance, it can be expressed in terms of the spinors or the relation between spinors, which gives you this one. This relation. So, commutator between two spinners is a multivector. Uh, now we can consider a special case of Clifford algebra 16. We can consider a subspace which is composed of bivectors, QAB, which is just the wedge products of two vectors, and the spinners of one ideal only. So, C alpha where alpha, beta, gamma are indices going from 1 to 256. And the commutation relations then become. So this commutation relation becomes this equation. This uh, commutation relations become this equation. And this equation becomes this equation. And if we take only the positive uh, chirality uh, spinners, we accept to obtain the subalgebra of E8. Um, yeah. <clears throat> so uh, let me summarize. Fundamental particles can be, so what I have shown, that fundamental particles can be described in terms of their volume degrees of freedom represented by Clifford numbers. And so we arrive at the concept of 16 dimensional manifold called Clifford space with Clifford algebra as a tangent space. Instead of Clifford algebra, we can consider the vector space, the 16 dimensional vector space spent over 16 basis vectors, which are generators of the 16 dimensional Clifford algebra. Let me say so 16 dimensional. Uh, we thus have a 16 dimensional space that has enough room uh, for, for the unification of fundamental particles and interactions, including gravity. Spinors are members of left ideas of CL16. They satisfy the Dirac equation in 16 dimensions. The extra dimensions give rise not only to the presence of the first generation of particles of, of the SO10 grand unification, but also two different gener generations. A consideration of the full uh, 16, Clifford algebra 16 includes the spinners of all other 256 minimal ideas spent over a spinner basis. And there is a relation between the spinner and the multivector basis. Structural constant of the algebra in one basis can be transformed in, into those of another basis. So we have a path to an explicit geometric derivation of the algebra E8 from the algebra of CL16. A problem remains to find a connection uh, with quantum field theory. So, so far I was doing classical theory, classical uh, fields or, yeah. Uh, to find uh, quantum, the relation with quantum field theory and find out how to incorporate not only the fermionic, but also the bosonic gauge fields within a formalism based on the CL16 and its extension uh, to symplectic and infinite dimensional Clifford algebra. 
Also Clifford algebra and the concept of algebraic spinos open Pandora box of possibilities that have been explored in the attempts to find the unified theory of fundamental particles and forces in, in a number of my works and also in a number of the works by other uh, people. These are some older works, but some more recent, some newer works of mine are presented here. So as I have come to the end, so thank you very much for the attention. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Matej. Very beautiful talk, very inspiring. Thank you so much. And uh, the talk is now open for questions. So we have a comment from Tony Bell. Tony, could you kindly unmute yourself and uh, say your comment, please, for discussion? <laughs> Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Please go ahead. Oh uh, yeah, the the question is in the in the text. I'll just read it. What is the difference between bosons and fermions in this uh, multivector space? And uh, do you have uh, Grassmann even and Grassmann odd elements uh, that could uh, satisfy the requisite Pauli exclusion commutation and anti commutation relations? I just told you uh, uh, that uh, it is necessary to find the relation because this. Uh, Spinor or vectorial bases uh, do not form representation of bosons and fermions. In order to get bosonic and fermionic fields, you must uh, do some further steps. So in this current setup, there are not bosons, but you can consider bosonic or fermionic fields as operator fields uh, spent over these bases here. Uh, because you can have, uh, yeah, you can have, uh, <clears throat> oh, okay, yeah, different now to explain by hands. Uh, you, you have to do some more uh, work. Uh, you perform scalar product of this object that I consider here with the uh, bosonic field, which is also expanded in terms of the same basis are here, but the scalar product of two of these bases give delta function in this space. And so you have multiplication of uh, of components and fields, yeah. Uh, because in order to know uh, what I'm doing here, one has to consider a lot of other things. Uh, control. Uh, I would like to have a possibility to share some other slides now for the discussion, but nothing works on the keyboard. I cannot go from this full screen. You, you, you could make it, you could maybe exit it and uh, share that's some other. Yeah, 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 yeah. If I exit, yeah, of course, of course. Stop sharing. Yeah, right. but I would like share, uh, again share, yeah, okay. This time I will not share full screen. Yeah. Yeah, right, right. Start, start, start sharing. And uh, I will share with uh, this PDF, yeah, which is the PDF of my talk. Yeah, but it's again full screen. Because I prepared a number of slides uh, for this discussion, where it would be very easy or maybe easier to explain ideas and discuss. So I know, I, I recall that in some talks, people were able to have not full screen. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Why explain this escape button does not work? The, I, escape, is, the escape is not working? Uh, maybe I did not press it enough, yeah. yeah. Okay, so we, we we can continue the discussion and maybe you can attempt more questions. Uh, just can... tell me if there is sharing or not. Uh, no, we are not seeing any sharing right now. Yeah, no, I must share, yeah, but not full screen. Just, yeah, no, I must search full screen, but full screen this time will not be, okay, yeah, share. Let me see what is now. Yeah, full screen, I must share, no, yeah, desktop, I must share desktop, yeah, that's the problem, okay.
Now we are sharing. Yeah, this is good. Yes, this is good. Uh, now I can give many possibilities to show you the slides of. And perfect, so, perfect, perfect. These are slides of this talk, and uh, these are slides of some other. Uh, okay. So yeah. let us now discuss. Yeah, this is the problem that I have not been able yet to uh, to come to the end. How to relate this with uh, usual quantum field theory? Uh, but in order to understand what we are doing, uh, perhaps it is useful that uh, yeah, it's not here. If I must put this seminar in the discussion, yeah. Here I had at the end, I had this slide, which, uh, yeah, for this, <clears throat> I am not derivative, very function. Yeah, I was talking about relativistic field, satisfying this equation here. Uh, and usually people say that there is problem how to interpret this as wave function and so on. But uh, if you have a scalar field, uh, for instance, then you can define the corresponding wave function in this way. This is very well known, but people see the, the problem uh, because uh, this is valid uh, in certain inertial system. So they said that uh, there are a lot of problems, but if one is doing the things carefully, one sees that there is no problem because one, okay, we have this klein golden equation. Uh, we define this object here that we call wave function. It is composed of the field and uh, a field momenta. And uh, this satisfies this equation here, which is just a Schrodinger equation. Yeah, but because this H here is non covariant. Uh, uh, this splitting or this definition works only in one reference frame. Yeah. Uh, but uh, you can define it in this covariant way, this expression, because instead of writing x as uh, coordinates, you can write it covariantly because now this x are uh, space time coordinates of the, uh, the, the time slides. And these are uh, creation operators. Uh, one particular person. Okay, so these are details. It's not. I would just like to say that uh, in the my philosophy is that uh, we have wave function uh, in uh, single particle wave function, and uh, what I consider here was I consider only this part. Of course, I consider the Dirac equation, not uh, this, uh, and I. Uh, in Dirac equation, this function is more component, and of course, a more component function we introduce this spinorial uh, basis. Okay, so you can envisage that uh, uh, if you have quantum field, you have here spinorial index, and of course, this creation operator has also spinorial index, and um, you can envisage that you go over this higher dimensional space where this spinorial index is not in uh, four dimensions but in higher dimension but then the, we have uh, here the possibility uh, of taking two parts one is to have this psi uh, uh, multiplied by the basis vectors and also this a creation operators which is now a fermionic uh, field Okay, here is boson, but I'm now talking about fermions. Uh, in this. Uh, so fermionic field is also expanded in terms of the same basis that I was using throughout this talk. Okay, we have one object and we have the other object. And we can take the scalar product of this object here. And because uh, the basis uh, gives you a delta function, we then arrive uh, at, at this object here. But uh, I have not yet uh, found how to define, how, how to understand bosonic field uh, with respect to this, uh, uh, this uh, scheme. But of course, there is another work of mine, which was published in, published in Advances of Different Algebra Applications, in which I consider a fair, fair, uh, symplectic and uh, orthogonal fields, and I extended this to 
uh, quantum field. So this is another part of the work, but I would like to join that work with that work. And the possible joining point is to define it. Aha, now I, 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 I understand what I should say. So here we are not talking in phase space. We must then go into phase space if we wish to, if we wish to uh, have bosonic field. So let me now consider uh, so what is here here was a uh, new perspective. This was a work of a work of mine in which uh, in which I in fact consider phase space. And I had this uh, I, I have fermionic and bosonic fields, of course, depending on whether we are considering orthogonal or simply thinking for the algebra. Okay, so in this part of the work I showed how from from uh, the complex equation can be uh, written as scalar equation. Uh, no, this first order equation can be written as the second order equation. Yeah, but this is only then Im imaginary or real. He has to be a part of the field. Okay, so <clears throat> if we go. Excuse me, Matij, I'm very sorry indeed to interrupt your exposition. But you appear to have gone out of full screen mode. Could you check your screen? Yes, I Sorry, sorry. So, of course, I came I, because I wanted to, to switch between. Now I will go full screen, yes, yeah, so that you could see. Yes, yes, of course. But if I'm doing full screen. That's then, better. Thank you. Yeah, but then. Just for the recording, it obviously looks much better if we can have your. Uh, your presentation in full but screen. if I do this, it's okay. No, that's perfect. That's perfect. Sorry to have interrupted. Okay, yeah. But now I will do this, and then I will enlarge where I come to to the point. Yeah. But here is a little more difficult because I don't have this slide to go. But yeah, but that's better. Uh, so yeah, the, the things are a little bit more involved that I explained in this overview of today. Um, so here I talk about how wave function arises. So the people are, are puzzled why wave function is complex. You can introduce a real and imaginary part. You get two instead of one, uh, one. first order equation, you can have uh, two. Yeah, okay, sorry, I'm not. not Okay, in the end, you arrive at this action here for um, complex fields, yeah. And, uh, but I would like to go further where I talk about quantum fields. So here I show how the arc equation can be derived in this way and, and so on. So I'm sorry, I, I cannot go now quicker. It would be quicker not on full screen uh, because then I could just slide to the, 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 the um, Matej, I just sorry to interrupt you. Uh, Do you think we should take further other questions, or you would like? Oh, 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 oh. Uh, I would like to, in this paper. Uh, I consider quantum fields as uh, basis vector of phase space. Uh, yes, yes, I understand. I understand. Yes, yes. If no, you'd no, like to continue, it's okay. But I think probably people, there are more comments in the chat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People, we want to talk to you. Yeah. David, would you like to go ahead, please? Yes, please, somebody can. No, no, uh, just please ask me. Uh, uh, anybody can now ask me. I can interrupt answering this question because it is so complicated. Yeah. I was curious if you've ever um, considered Fourier phase space. I mean, first of all, thanks for the, the lovely talk. You've uh, explored a lot of interesting ideas, and I really like how you discussed how 16 dimensions can emerge from uh, three plus one dimensions and how that relates to E8. I think that's a marvelous idea. And so um, maybe I could just ask you how, what you, you, it seemed like you interpreted the 16 dimensions as describing all of the multi vectors of the three plus one Clifford algebra. Have you considered if that relates, how that relates to phase space and um, Fourier space at all? Yeah, I just wanted to say that in this paper that I was not able to come, uh, I'm considering phase space, yes. 
uh, but uh, not Clifford Alge. Yeah, difficult how to say. Yeah, sorry. I should have written the transparency. It's difficult this paper. Yeah. Um, um, as I said, uh, there, there are two things. Uh, one is this Clifford algebra basis, and the other thing is uh, the phase space, which I was not able to, 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 to find here in this paper. Uh, um, because the crucial is the idea that, I, ah, now we are here. So, we are, we will have to, yeah, formulation in terms of phase space basis vectors. And I said it is step to quantum field theory. Mm -hmm. So I consider vectors in symplectic and orthogonal. Now I give full screen if you prefer. So it's better full screen, yeah? Okay. Yeah, I think it it is a lot better full screen, at least okay, as, then as then far as I'm concerned. <laughs> And uh, do you see the symbols or is better that I enlarge now? I can see them, yes. If you see, okay, but I can also enlarge. Let me see what happens if I slightly increase. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, so this is these are vectors in symplectic and orthogonal uh, spaces. So uh, this is a vector. I already explained that uh, it satisfies uh, the phase space equation, uh, but uh, now I am involving also the basis. Like I introduced basis in vector space, now I am introducing basis in phase space. Now, basis in phase space are this K uh, is discrete, uh, it's not continuous, sorry. So let us. Uh, so in better this understand. So these are these are basis vectors of phase space, and instead of these basis vectors, you can introduce this combination of basis vectors, and uh, consider this object here, phi, the same object phi, expanded in terms of of these basis. And this wave function. So we introduce this and this, uh, where, where this Q are combination of of the basis vectors, which are now in infinite dimensions, because we have here this this, this x means like infinite dimensional index. That there are functions in in yeah in space, three dimensional space. This is three dimensional space here, but the object here uh, uh, carry two indexes, alpha, spinoria, or whatever index, and space index x. Well, in this sense, this k are infinite dimensional. And uh, then I consider uh, two possible cases. So, uh, for instance, uh, symplectic case where the batch product of these vectors give the symplectic metric. And I consider the orthogonal case, in which case the inner product is this one. Defined I like uh, Clifford uh, algebra product, sim symmetrized product. So these are now uh, generalized Clifford numbers and I get them this. And so on, we can have now field theory. Ah, here I said, constructing quantum field theory, out of phase space. Yeah. Uh, Matej, uh, should we have some more discussion, if you don't mind? Yeah, yeah, of course, yes. Yeah, we would like to talk to you now, because you said so many interesting things. So yes, yes, I understand. I just, anybody uh, who, who is interested can go and look in this paper and see what I wanted to do. Right, right. Yeah, that, I just wanted to remind us that these things, uh, the answer to your question, is can be found in this paper and in some of the paper that are cited here. So let us now proceed with discussion. Yeah, finish. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, David, anything further? Yeah, I'm, uh, thanks for 
elaborating by showing those uh, infinite dimensional indices. Yeah, I mean, I, I can let other people ask questions. Okay, the burnt and then Anthony. Burnt, go ahead, please. I think Anthony was first in the comments oh, okay. section. Anthony, you go ahead, please. Okay. Um, can you hear me okay? Yes, yes. Go okay. Ahead. Right. So uh, thanks to Maciek very much for the talk. Um, there were quite a few similarities that I found between what was being said here today and what I was saying last week. Mm -hmm. In particular, in the con I don't know if you heard my talk last week. Okay. Yes, yes, I heard it. Yes, it was very nice. Yes, I enjoyed it. Okay. But I, the, the bit I was going to stress is that um, I was extending from 8 to 16 the set of things that we allow to act on each other, yeah, uh, yeah. So starting with the space-time algebra. And that certainly allows you to build up to, you know, a very nice eight-dimensional Clifford space, mm -hmm. 256 dimensions large, in which you can do a great deal of what you need in terms of getting the appropriate groups and so on. Mm -hmm. Now, you go to effectively CL88, which is much, much bigger <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, I was just wondering, do you really need to go that far, and, and what's the motivation for it? Oh, yeah. of course not. Uh, therefore, it is very nice that we have this E8 as a subgroup. Uh, sub uh, so, in fact, uh, apparently we don't need so large uh, algebra. We can confine uh, our consideration, we can focus consideration on E8, which is a subspace of this very large algebra. Uh, so, okay, uh, but, but E8. That is very interesting uh, and also uh, nice that E8 is embedded in this big space and uh, is algebra in itself. Yeah. Uh, of course, I'm not considering these complications of different sorts of E8. Uh, okay, but. Right. Well, what about E8 cross E8, Matej? Uh, this, uh, this I don't know. Uh, this oh. is, this would be is this cross A8 cross E8? Is it subspace of CL16 or no? This I don't know. Yeah. Oh, that was my question. Yes. Okay. Thank I you. I don't know. I don't. If it is, it is okay. But it is not. One must do something different. Yeah. Okay. Anthony, go ahead, please. Yeah. Well, just to say, uh, I'm of course very keen myself on seeing. If the if E8 can come out as a subgroup of what I'm doing in the more economical case of just um, you know CL8, yeah, um, so CL8 and E8 are very close in dimensions. Two fifty six is two forty eight plus eight. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> yes, yes, you are completely right because another possibility, different from one I presented here, is that you started from. Eight-dimensional, eight-dimensional phase space and built a Clifford algebra. Then you have CL8. This was discussed in some other paper of mine, and I think that also in my last uh, book. Here I confined myself in the consideration of CL8. Yeah, yeah. Okay. This, yeah, there are many ways we have not yet arrived at the final question. For me, it was only interesting that we have this structure, space-time plus 10 dimension and SO10 unification and so on. And so I wanted to show you this possibility. But the other possibility is to start from the eight-dimensional space, phase space, and Clifford algebra over this phase space, composed over the operators of phase space. Yeah. Yeah, you are completely right. So you curious, uh, Matthias, you never mentioned octonions. Ah. Your, your yeah, problem. that's my problem. <laughs> what are your thoughts? Uh, on... You know how to construct, uh, but also I think that uh, many other speakers showed how octonions can arise from Clifford algebra, but I, 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 I'm not talking about this in this. Mm -hmm. Do you know how you can get octonions from Three fourth algebra. No, it's it's okay. That was just a, a yeah. Remark. Yeah. I think that in the book by Lunesto, there are many of these interesting things mm -hmm. between uh, octonions and Clifford algebra. No, no, I don't recall precisely uh, what is the subject there, but I think that you can find in Lunesto uh, book uh, some ideas. 
Uh, I think that he is not considering uh, Octonio separately uh, from uh, from Clifford Alger. Yeah. And uh, when you say more than one generation, do you mean precisely three, or is that number? No, no. If if this setup, uh, when bus comes from the internal space, then in principle we should not be confined to only like in atom. You get many many excited states. So also. In this external, in internal space, you could have many, much a number of excited states. This must be elaborated. I am not able to do this, and see how many generations is is there. Okay, thank you. Yeah, Anthony, and um, something more, please, or from your side. Yes, um, if I could just ask about something different, which is when you were talking about introducing interactions, you said you needed a curved. Uh, space. I think it was a curved M8. Um, and you introduced uh, an omega connection there. Yeah. So what I wanted to ask is, I would have thought a, a usual way would be to think about what global symmetries you've got, and then you bring those down to local symmetries to get a covariant derivative and so on, which will introduce this omega. Do you have anything like that that, that can motivate what the... Yeah. Spin connection is. So, yeah, he, here I was simplifying things. In, in another work, uh, I was uh, discussing this uh, in more carefully and so on. Yeah, you were right. Yeah, yeah. But uh, uh, there are many subtleties. It's usually difficult now to say by hand waving, uh, but uh, there is a work in which I was. Uh, Talking or uh, discussing precisely what you mentioned here, yes. How to uh, to have this local and global structure and so on. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Uh, one other thing, Matej, when you included M11, you got a six-dimensional space with signature 2-4. So what is the physics of that? And could the signature be 3-3? Is that allowed? Yeah, if you have complex uh, wave function, and then in principle you could use this basis with this signature. But I think that physics chooses one possibility. So theoretically, many possibilities are possible. Yeah. But so what what is the physics of this extent? Yeah, yeah, but you are right. You we have this space, uh, two comma four space. Uh, yeah, one possibility. Okay, if we uh, have complex. Uh, uh, Clifford algebra, then we can have signature 3C. Three, three. You are right, yeah, one possibility is this. Signature 3C, mm -hmm. all, all possible signatures are, yeah, yeah. So, so if, if gravity is the curvature of 3, 1 space time, and now I have a larger space time, there should be some additional forces, you know, coming in as a geometry of these additional dimensions. Do you have any thoughts on that? Of course, you are right. Uh, you should have forces, yeah, here. But of course, this is a matter of further research and further work. Uh, yeah. So it comes very in principle, of course. We we have first flat space, then we introduce interactions or gravity and so on. But we are still very very far from uh, from quantum gravity in this higher dimensional space. Yeah. That because somebody said how to connect with. Uh, with bodonic and fermionic fields. Mm -hmm. so there's a lot of problems I, I was not able yet to uh, come to the point to be able to uh, coherently discuss in the talk or in, in the right. paper. Yeah. So in, in my work, I, what I'm seeing is a, some suggestion that when you include what you have as M11 and go to a six-dimensional space, there is a possibility that it has something like a SU2 kind cross SU2 gauge theory, which is uh, jointly representing gravity and the weak interaction. The weak interaction is more like a geometry of the six dimensional space time along with gravity and uh, less of an internal symmetry and more of a space time symmetry of this larger space time. Yes, yes, it's very, very possible, very interesting what you are saying. Yeah, this, what is interesting, this, I think that last time somebody mentioned that the gravity, or I read somewhere, that the gravity is very 
uh, similar in many respects to weak force. Yeah, we have been discussing this. Uh, I think Anthony also, I don't remember whether he said something. Uh, some question yeah. was there for him, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because also when I am studying, for instance, just uh, Clifford Space, this uh, Clifford algebra, CL13, uh, and Spinos only in this Clifford algebra, not in this Heidegger, then it looks like we have, have also weak interactions in this, uh, in mm. this setup. Uh, yes. in we can associate uh, uh, left ideas of, uh, yes. left down with space time Spinos. And this, and this, uh, we can uh, associate with uh, with uh, weak interactions. For instance, mm -hmm. if, so what is very interesting is that if you perform space inversion of this spinor, mm -hmm. this column, usually people uh, do what to do, what to do, how, how space inversion and charge conversion is within this. But if you perform uh, inversion on on the basis vectors gamma mu, then it turns and constructs spinos in the way as we do in as a minimal uh, ideas. Then you obtain spinot not in this ideal but in the third ideal. So mm -hmm. it, it means that uh, reverse spinos live in third ideas, and you can say that in third ideas there is a different. Uh, weak force or different force than here. Mm -hmm. uh, so this could explain why uh, performing space inversion, mm -hmm. we don't see the same setup. Uh, we have problems if we see the space inversion X only on one column, but mm -hmm. we uh, realize that space inversion effect brings one idea, one vector, or let us say column to the third column, uh, then uh, you have uh, this possibility of understanding the chiral behavior in, in weak interactions. Yes. Uh, yes. A, few, a few days back, there's a paper by Peter Voigt. It's actually titled Space Time is Right Handed. <laughs> I am. I am. <laughs> that, that has some similarities with what you are doing and saying. Burn, please go ahead. Sorry to. Have made you wait. I think that somebody, if somebody would like to, but I think that this is very important. Yeah, this is also connected with uh, the objection that people will say to me: How can you get masses from the extra dimension when we all, all know that the big problem of kaluza klein uh, theory is that uh, it uh, it uh, implies uh, mass in in mass in four dimensions. But we note that some people say that in, in four dimensions we must have massless spinors and apply Higgs mechanism to get masses. Mm -hmm. uh, and so there is a problem. Uh, but if you say the theory is formulated in higher dimension, no problem. Uh, when you go to four dimension, you get mass. But if you take into account that the child symmetry is not. Uh, the, 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 the space inversion is not as simple as people usually say, but the, the spinner from the first idea is transformed to the second idea, and then here is different action. Then uh, this problem of of uh, in mass in Kaluza Klein theory is uh, somehow solved no? or, or understood. Mm -hmm. There are many things that must be considered. Uh, uh, we are. We had lots of problems. Yeah, we cannot come to unify theory. So this are a bunch of the paths that must be taken into account. But this will just answer to the objection that will certainly come to people listening or, or looking at my talk but, uh, about uh, this problem that Kaluza Klein theory are problematic just because of mass. But you are saying now that mass comes from Kaluza Klein theory section. You know? mm -hmm. But what is interesting here is that I don't have more dimension of space time. I'm considering uh, what I'm considering uh, configuration space of space time objects, uh, have configuration, for instance, brains, and the, therefore configurations are multi dimensional. So multi dimensions are in space time, and yet we have high dimensional space. 
Yeah, yeah, I, I would still be concerned by that M11, you know. To me, that seems to suggest a six-dimensional space-time. Yes. Maybe the two extra dimensions are very small, but uh, uh, so is it four or is it six? That's the question for me. <laughs> uh, is space-time four-dimensional or is it six-dimensional? Look, uh, the, 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 in, in these setups uh, that I'm discussing here, uh, you don't need to compactify extra dimensions. That I agree. That I agree. With that, because I these agree. are areas there, you can measure in principle those areas and their degrees. Yes, of absolutely. No so, compactification. It's very interesting that you don't need compact dimension. For instance, absolutely. Okay, I agree. Just focus on your question again. Yeah, what is yeah, your Yeah, problem? I totally agree. No, I think we should go to Bernd. He's waiting. Please go okay. ahead. Uh, thank you for the nice talk, uh, Mati, and thank you to, to Jinder. Uh, I have a very general uh, question concerning uh, the setup of the whole meeting. Would it be possible to uh, get the slides from all of the speakers? For example, for this oh, talk, it would be really helpful. Then we could uh, then okay. we could have uh, access to uh, his reference list at the end of his <laughs> slides. Which is lower, uh, because uh, the the. the Sound is not very clear. Just oh, okay, then I will talk more slowly. So I, I, I so I was asking whether uh, we can get the slides of all of the talks, also your talk, because at the end uh, you have a nice list of references. So then we can read your papers. Oh, okay, this would be helpful if every send, member send of the me, send me a message if you have my email because I yes I have. <laughs> Uh, I, I could also discuss this with Michael. Oh, so, uh, of course, I will thank you. But I'm not sure that I will read uh, this discussion here. So don't put... Uh, yeah. No, I was saying maybe I talk to Michael and we request all the speakers if they would be willing to share their slides and we upload it along with the talk video. Ah, uh, so, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. I think that'd be very useful if you could do that. Right. Yeah, yeah, it would be really helpful. Uh, so I think I'll talk definitely talk to Michael and uh, try to get this uh, done. Yeah, we should have thought of this earlier. Sorry about that. But yeah, that's, that's, uh... that's a, but anyway, send me a message and I will send you tomorrow uh, the slides if you... Okay, then I will send the message. Yeah, yeah. We are still... Uh, well, we are already in email exchange. Okay. I'm the guy with the questions on extra time dimensions and tachyon. So um, just, just as a reminder... Um, I try to better understand your model. In one of your slides, you say that you have a space time, you call it M88. So that for me, it looks like you have a 16 dimensional space time with eight spatial dimension and eight time dimensions. And then you also have a Clifford space and a vector space. But uh, I'm trying to understand the, the meaning of the M88. So is this a space time or is this a configuration space? No, this is a still configuration space. Yeah, that's the configuration I, space. The configuration okay. space of the brains. Uh, and uh, at first step, I described is that Clifford algebra object, and then I said, okay, but I cannot do rotation between all components in this space. So let us uh, change uh, the basis uh, and take the vector basis. Uh, but ah, the, okay, okay, then I misunderstood. So the, the M88 is still configuration space of the brain. So this is, but this configuration space of the brain is just a part of possibilities because in other works of mine, I was considering more general, other cases of configuration spaces. I was considering infinite dimensional configuration space of brains. And also I was considering configuration space of uh, of particles. In, 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 I've, I have found a way how to formulate uh, the relativity in configuration state, space of the system of particles. Okay, let me now go out of full screen and I think that I have slide here. Okay. Uh, let me see which one is this. Maybe Colimar. Okay, maybe this is one. Let's see. Yeah. Okay, let me okay. do it. Cool, cool. L? I see. Yeah, look, I was considering this talk configuration space of brains, but not infinite dimensional, but uh, finite dimensional, the quench description of brains. But in okay. other um, uh, 
in some other work presented in this talk, uh, uh, Colin Barney, <laughs> what was this? Cleet, you know. Uh, okay, uh, I consider this action. Mm -hmm. I recognize that this can be written as uh, the, the action in many dimensional configuration space, because this M now means configurations of particles. And so on, so on. Uh, it, what is interesting here uh, is that uh, now, now metric is multidimensional, uh, and block uh, each block is space-time metric it, uh, associated with uh, each particle in this comparison. But I am considering the theory in which now the action is uh, composed of two terms: matter part, which is uh, the the action for the for the system of point particles written as as just the word line in in this higher dimension now this is configuration space mm -hmm. gravity part where gravity is now this part so in in, in the <clears throat> how to say the action that i started from i had this diagonal or block diagonal metric or you know, each block is space time metric but then i consider the possibilities that we had uh, of diagonal terms, so more general metric, uh, and the action for this term here. Uh, okay, okay. So thank you very much. That helped me to uh, to clarify everything. And, uh, and, and that, then that, that, now we can have Kaluta Klein uh, theory uh, in this higher dimensional space. We get the geodetic equations and so on and so on. Yeah. Okay. But uh, yeah. this is still configuration space. We are not in a, a six dimensional space time then. This like is many dimensional configuration space due to this system of particles. So I see, okay. The idea okay. Is we, we have problems with space-time. In this setup, space-time is nothing but a subspace of multidimensional uh, configuration uh, space. So space-time uh, is no longer yeah. fundamental. You start with the configuration space, and you have a subspace of this configuration space, which corresponds what is traditionally called space-time. So this is the it is yeah. very reasonable because that we have a universe composed of many parts. It is this huge configuration space. But what we perceive is just motion of one, one particle. And of course, degrees of freedom of one particle is neglecting the change of degrees of freedom of other particles. We say, OK, this, this is now space-time. So space-time is such something that is associated with degrees of freedom of a single particle in this many configurations. Ah, ah, okay, okay. I Thank you. Such philosophy could help us uh, to come to quantum gravity from that thought. The other point is from the point of view of quantum fields as fermionic or bosonic operators. Mm -hmm. Okay, then uh, thank you very much. And so I'm done with my questions. I thank think you. there were a few comments in the chat, so maybe yeah. the people yeah. can yeah. then. So comments from Tony Bell and David. Please go ahead and share your comments. Uh, okay. Um, so when you when you uh, create the sixteen dimensional vector space from CL one three, if you followed the uh, uh, David Hestonis approach to the Dirac to the real Dirac theory, you would have the um, <coughs> the Dirac spin or being the uh, being the eight components of that, which are the even subalgebra. And that would correspond then to the fermion part of the uh, of the standard model. And I wondered how you would connect up that, yeah. I that idea with the um, <laughs> with your subspace. Yeah, my impression is that uh, this is another approach to, yeah, this is also one possible approach. Yeah, of course. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> oh yeah, and uh, then the other but, thing I was. But then I don't know how to connect that approach in which spinors are already even great object of Clifford. How, how to connect it is the fact that uh, usually spinors uh, are are left-handed and right-handed, and uh, in the column you if you in this construction that I was considering here, uh, the spinor uh, are not on uh, are not only even. But there is also uh, odd grade. Uh, part well, of well, the left-handed and the right-handed aspect of the of the uh, Hestani's approach to the Dirac spinner, I think, uh, is when you split the uh, eight components into the scalar and three of the bivectors, and the other component is the uh, 
other three bivectors and the the uh, the uh, four fourth four grade term uh, mm -hmm. e zero one two three and so that that gives you two you know in a sense a spinner a, a, a spinner and a dual spinner which are kind of pushed together into an eight dimensional even object and that covers the the two sides of the the vial spinner. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, this is another approach. Yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> if you're finished, I'll, I'll... That for theoretical physics, this approach is easier to handle. Uh, but okay, I think that uh, on the other hand, the approach you are talking about is very good because it incorporates fermions and uh, bosons. Yeah. Well, it doesn't really do bosons. It just it just covers the uh, left and right part of the direct oh, okay. spinner. Yeah. Okay. 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 Well, the other thing I was thinking was that the 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 norm in CL one three is the thing that you would be looking at if you were trying to uh, think about uh, invariances and getting Lagrangian terms uh, from um, these Clifford objects. Uh, and if you take the norm of a full multivector in uh, CL one three, just by taking m times m reverse. Uh, uh, well, the norm squared that would be, uh, then you get an object which is grade zero, uh, grade one, and grade four put together. And I wondered if you had any thoughts. Uh, and then if if you if you're taking the norm of a of, of a sub multi vector like an even or odd sub sub multi vector, you may or may not get those extra grade one and grade four terms. And I wondered if you had a, an interpretation for those non scalar. Terms showing up in the uh, in this norm in I your touched, approach. Touched something which is similar to your question in my first book, uh, but uh, otherwise, uh, I take when I take in norm, I take only the scalar part, not this multigrade uh, uh, parts of the norm. But you might be throwing out something interesting. Just a moment. I, I think that I can show you on a simplified case. Uh, which should be this one. Let me see if I have slide here. This is Norman, Moshe, Marco, Colin, Paris. Oh, oh. Uh, uh, Moscow. Yeah, in, in Moscow, I think I was talking about it. No, I don't remember. And you know, those are extra terms they could relate to to okay. spins and isospins, you know? Yeah, it could be. So here is about how you do this. So let me see, I don't remember if I had this more now. Um, I forgot. Yeah, okay, here I have. So I have here generalized like equations, spin or uh, expanded in terms of multigrades or spinners. And the norm, okay, gammas matrices are obtained by taking the scalar part. Yeah, the scalar part. So you have this abstract geometric object, which is not matrix, but preferred number. And you take the scalar part of these things here. And of course, you, you get the Dirac equation in components. So where is norm? Oh, yeah, norm is here. For norm, I take the scalar part only. Yeah. Because he, okay, I cannot do everything at once. Uh, at this stage, uh, it was sufficient to consider the norm as a scalar part of the Clifford product of of two of these vectors, uh, spinos in this case. Yeah. And then you get the Dirac equation, this form, this covariant derivatives, and uh, in this connection, uh, you have uh, I, I guess you have. Here you have SO2 gauge fields uh, between two first and second idea, and here you have SO2 gauge fields between third and fourth. And the transformation, the inversion brings you spinor from here to here and from here to here. So I was talking about separate uh, X force and another kind of X force between this object. But I'm not sure if this model is realistic. This is just a model because um, then I don't know how to relate it with the fact that within SU2, SU10, uh, O10, uh, spin 10, we also have uh, this uh, 
weak force. Uh, but uh, on the other hand, uh, we have now uh, interaction, weak interaction already here, but then again interaction in this uh, O10 part, uh, 10 dimensional part, so I don't know. This is just idea. But of course, your question was what would give uh, the, the higher grade. Uh, yeah, those, I, those, other, those other terms are just yeah, sitting yeah. there waiting to be interpreted, I think. I am confining here only to uh, to uh, scalar part. And it works well for doing uh, this right. equation coming from the abstract geometric form of the arc equation to the component of the arc equation, and so on and so on. Okay, maybe if I could just ask one more question. Um, I haven't looked at your work on the mirror symmetry, uh, but how would you? How does that show up in uh, the framework you described? today uh, because mirror particles could be seen as uh, re reflection symmetries in the in the space that you're talking about uh, <clears throat> and um, that would even start to possibly connect up to uh, CPT in which you have these uh, the, the parity and the time symmetry combining to mm -hmm. make a charge symmetry. But uh, the setups the things must be I think redone again because uh, space inversion is given by changes gammas into minus gamma. Yeah. Then this theta, which are composed from gammas. Here I'm using slightly different notation. The theta bar uh, is then in my work. Okay, but doesn't matter. So you have this theta and theta bar, and you compose pinos in terms of theta and theta bar. And it, if you perform uh, this space inversion acting on on the vector basis, then the spinner basis becomes uh, uh, goes yeah. this way. Yeah. Uh, first idea goes into this. This is the spinner of the of the first idea. So does your does your mirror uh, particle framework yeah, give mirror, give a give a clue yeah, about yeah. the uh, chiral the chiral property? Yeah, these are left and these are right. And I think that chiral properties are then just reversed here. Yeah, where you go. In. <laughs> no, but I mean the fact that uh, that we're only using SU2L. Yeah. And now, what I wanted to say, no, I forgot. Uh, what was your question? I, I wanted to say is that people would, would say uh, how, to, how to understand this. Yeah. Because uh, Okay, usually vectors transform in this way, but uh, spinor transform just only from the right. But the idea is that uh, if we consider the full Clifford algebra, also vectors can be transformed only from the right and not uh, from the left. And of course, then the grade of vector changes. It's no longer uh, grade one object, but some other grade object or mixture of them. <laughs> That's a very interesting uh, property, actually, when I heard you describe that. I was thinking that maybe that could be the yeah. basis for particle transformations when yeah. you have when you have this uh, this grade switching uh, transformations. Yeah, you get more people are confining, say, vector transform this way, spinner this way. But if we take everything into account that spinners live in Clifford algebra as ideas, then, of course, every keyword algebra object can transform either from the left or from the right or from the both. And with the mixture that on the left is different transformation than on the right. And we have then these many possibilities of rotations uh, that I. Uh, yeah, yeah, but I mean things like, you know, electrons turning into neutrinos. Yes, 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 all this. But uh, I think this Piacese object was boring. How connect the idea that uh, uh, spinners are ideas with the fact that uh, vectors transform in this way and, and on the other hand that spinners are composed of vectors and he saw the problem. Of course he saw the problem because he did not remove this condition that vectors must transform in only this way. But here I, I illustrated this. For instance, we are in space-time. We, object, laboratory basis are vectors, for instance, gamma one, gamma two. And then this object that we consider spinner, for instance. Now consider that that we rotate, we in the laboratory rotate the spinner that we consider spinner is that remains fixed, and we rotate. What we rotate? We rotate over by P, and this spinner must remain the same. 
Uh, Mars not transforming the funny spin order way. So right. if observer together with the reference frame uh, uh, rotate, then after having all, all the all exhibiting this uh, full rotation, he observes the same spin order. But this holds the sign of the spin order did not change here because this was passive way. But of course, uh, besides passive transformation, we can consider also, also active transformation, which means that instead of uh, rotating laboratory frame, we keep laboratory frame fixed and rotate the spinner. But in that case, also nothing will change. The spinner will not change sign. It will change sign only if we rotate spinner in funny way, namely only with the rotation from the right and uh, from the left. Yeah. Then of course you will have this well-known property of spinner. So I think that people here are somewhere uh, doing some uh, confusion because they did not realize that we have full Clifford algebra and both spinors and vectors are object of this full Clifford algebra and they can be rotated in either, either way. Okay, I'm done. I just want to thank you. I think there's a lot of really great uh, clues in the approach you're taking. I agree. I, I totally agree with that. Yes. Yes, thank you. Uh, David, you would like to say something? Uh, well, let's see. Uh, maybe I could just ask, um, Matej, what your approach uh, to three generations of matter is. Maybe I missed, I, you mentioned some details about, I think, going into extra dimensions. Yes. Um, I, yeah, could you kind of uh, summarize um, your view on that? Um, so are you using um, like a local gauge group and then thinking extra dimensions in that sense, or is it related to the membrane structure? Because you also mentioned kind of this configuration space. So I, maybe I just wanted to summarize that, I make sure I understood your stance. Yeah, now it's difficult for me to answer this because by hand waving, I don't know how to do, but um, so, uh, yeah, could you ask again or to reformulate the question? I'm sorry, I cannot answer just at the moment. Maybe okay, I fair enough. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll just uh, mention that. Um... Right no, I'm not so young. Okay, but <laughs> okay, uh, just rephrase the question. Maybe I will now have an idea how to answer it. Yeah, I mean, one approach to get, I mean, if you want multiple generations of spinners, you're going to need more degrees of freedom. But so, I you speak to, uh, so quickly that I cannot. Follow first from because of sound and secondly because English is not my native language. So you stop. If you speak a little slower, maybe I will uh, understand you. Sorry. So uh, my question is about multiple generations of matter and how to model them in relation to extra dimensions. And I suppose one reason why that might make sense is because uh, multiple generations of spinners need additional off-shell degrees of freedom. And so if you had a single spinner in higher dimensions, maybe that could be used to describe multiple generations in lower dimensions. Um, so I was just curious um, what your views were on uh, modeling three generations with extra dimensions. Yeah, I said that uh, it, it, uh, generation come because particles have different masses, but otherwise the same spinor, spinorial structure and uh, the masses come uh, from, the, from the extra dimensions in the way that I explained, uh, because uh, Yeah, no, no, I'm, I'm tired. Sorry, Matic, to uh, interrupt again, but can you go back to full screen? Yes. Only when I come to to the, the slide that I wish to. Ah, he's he, no. okay. I forgot. Matic, Matic, did you say you're feeling tired now? Okay, we can have a five minutes discussion, but I'm sorry if now I cannot concentrate as I would like. Yeah, I think I. Uh, we should be. Oh, okay. Yeah. Just your about, slide. But I think it's important that uh, I show him this slide. Uh, if you remember where it was, where I was, I, where I was talking. 
about Heidel dimension. After Dirac equation, yeah. Yeah, yeah, here. Yeah. After Dirac equation, I can this structure, yeah. Mass comes because I split space-time in uh, the, uh, this higher dimension uh, space into space-time part and higher dimension part. Uh, so the mass in this setup does not come, is not part of the spinor. Uh, spinor is what is spinor here? Yeah, this object. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's this object here, yeah. The X, yeah, this. But it comes from, so it's a different uh, general relation of mass than from one you talked. Uh, the other possibility is to generate mass from uh, from spinors. I don't know. If you have some ideas. Yeah, so um, actually recently put out a paper where basically uh, we I like that you use extra time dimensions. And so if you used um, spinners in three plus three or four plus four as the conformal group of three plus three, you can get 16 off shell degrees of freedom and it can project onto three different sets of uh, eight off shell degrees of freedom. Um, um, but they, the off shell degrees of freedom overlap. So you can get three sets of generations. Uh, from the extra time dimensions is what yeah. I think. And, yeah. But I'm still trying to understand how that might fit into some membrane theory in the future that I haven't really figured out yet. And so you seem to be one of the, there's very few people who understand uh, the relationship of Clifford algebras to membranes at a very deep level. Maybe you and uh, Carlos are some of the best that I've seen. Um, and so, yeah, I'm just still trying to, <laughs> that's kind of what I've been seeing. And I feel like you see different aspects of it as well. So, yeah, but maybe you are it. right. Because, of course, this object here, uh, uh, this spin on the high dimension can be uh, projected in the way uh, you are talking about. And if you generate get generation, then perhaps we have uh, both uh, mass coming in this way and uh, another uh, contribution to mass coming from this way. I, who knows? Yeah. Man. Yeah, I think that I listened to your talk was very okay. Exactly, I I watched it. I was unable to, uh, yeah, but I I watch recording. Yes, okay, yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, great. Thank you, uh, Matej. So maybe we can wind up now. Yeah. Yeah. If somebody has an urgent question. Uh, which I will answer, but saying him, I will send you <laughs> the paper or reference. Yeah, yeah, I, I think we have, <laughs> so we anybody have who has important question can ask now, uh, and I will say, send me email, and I will send you. Yeah, paper. but we are really, we are really grateful. <laughs> We're really grateful. It's been beautiful. I, I, I. I stick to what I said in my introduction. I think you have some very promising things happening here, and uh, we look forward to more development. Okay, thank you.